Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we're gonna do something very interesting. We're gonna talk about the biggest disappointments of the Mr. Olympia 2024. Now overall it was an amazing Mr. Olympia, honestly, one of the most exciting Mr. Olympias in, in a while. The judging was done right, we have a lot of interesting results, but there are a couple of disappointments, guys, that we thought are gonna do better or look better. One of them, the first one we're gonna start with, is Andrew Jacked. Now, I don't think Andrew Jacked was off, necessarily. I don't think he was much worse than he was at Texas Pro. Did he say that he was gonna be much better at the Mr. Olympia compared to Texas Pro? Yeah, he did. His coach did as well. His trainer did as well. Everybody kind of hyped him up, but he didn't deliver. He wasn't much worse than Texas, the lighting here was different, but he wasn't much worse, he was basically the same, so he didn't deliver a better package, and also, mainly, it was simply, he didn't look as good compared to the other top guys, not as good as a lot of people thought he would. A lot of people thought that he was gonna win the Mr. Olympia, or beat Samson, place in the top three, However, he barely managed to crack the top 5, he could have easily placed even worse than last year, he could have easily placed 6 this year. We all know that he has super impressive front poses, but from the back, and especially from the side, he simply doesn't have what it takes to go against the other guys, the top 3 guys. As you can see from the back, he was lacking a lot of detail in the hamstrings, a lot of mass in the glutes, like the width in the legs from behind, it wasn't good enough. The back, even though it is improved, and it was, let's say, decent, it's not as big as Samson's or Derek's or Hadi's. So Andrew still needs to work on growing. He needs to get a bigger back, he needs to gain more muscle in the hamstrings, he needs to be bigger in order to lean down enough to have all the details in the back, in the glutes, in the hamstrings. So no, if you guys thought he was gonna place in the top three or even win the Mr. Olympia, you were criminally wrong. And also, he was beaten by Martin Fitzwater, and that's something nobody really saw, nobody really expected. I mentioned it, I thought there was a chance, but I didn't know that as well. I also thought Andrew's gonna place higher, uh, in all likelihood, but yeah, apparently Martin surprised us pleasantly, and Andrew disappointed. Alright, the next biggest disappointment in my mind was Ramon Dino. Now, we all thought he was gonna be either second or third in Classic Physique, but for some reason, he was super watery at the pre-judging, he was sweating like crazy, it looked like he was melting on that stage, I don't know what him and Chris Cito did for this show, why this happened, why wasn't he dry enough, I guess they'll talk about it, but something went wrong along the way in the peaking process probably. I'm, I'm imagining that he was just suffering too bad to make the weight and they had to revive his physique by giving him food and water at the same time, which was probably necessary in order for him not to look uh, flat, but I guess they went a little bit overboard and it didn't work out. I mean, he still placed fourth, he could have placed lower than that, but since he was a second last year, close second to Chris Bumstead, we all thought this year he might push him even more, but no, he wasn't even close. Now, based on this look right here, I think he was still flat. I still think he didn't carve up enough, uh, and uh, I mean, maybe it's, it's like the weight problem, he's too heavy for this division. Every year so far, he was suffering, he was struggling to make the weight. It's not like he is big enough for bodybuilding, no. But still, you know, when you have to make the weight, when you have to, like, uh, cut down so hard, you lose fullness. And he was definitely uh, not, like, uh, flat in terms of uh, not carved up enough. He was, I think he over-dieted. You know, he had to, to make the weight. And his physique did not look fresh. He didn't have the fullness. He definitely looked a lot flatter than last year at the Mr. Olympia. Conditioning was okay, but, like, there was some loose skin in the back, especially in the front poses, he was smaller, flatter, nothing was uh, popping out, it was just overall underwhelming, especially compared to Mike Sommerfeld, Urs Kalecinski, and Chris Bumstead. Will he come back better next year? Well, he needs to compete in order to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, so we'll see him, maybe the Arnold Classic, maybe at a Pittsburgh Pro or Dubai Pro, who knows. Uh, we'll see if he can actually improve on this and come back better. Next year, there will be no Chris Bumstead, and if he brings his old version, he can win the Mr. Olympia. So, he needs to start working much, much harder now and use this opportunity 
peak better next year. I think he's not done. He's a young guy. He can still do it. I mean, Brion Ainsley was pushing him and Brion is like 46 now or something like that. So I think it's very possible for Ramon to defeat Urs and Mike Sommerfeld as well next year if he does a better job prepping. All right, the next guy, we talked about him a little bit too much, so I'm gonna go briefly over this one, but it's Sean Clarida. Sean Clarida really disappointed everybody in the 212. We thought he actually might push Keon and like potentially beat him this year, but it wasn't even close. Sean came basically and looked exactly the way he looked like five or ten years ago. He downsized dramatically. Yeah, he was a little bit drier, a little bit leaner, but a lot, a lot smaller, a lot flatter. He lost the back, he lost the legs, he lost the arms, the chest as well. He has very narrow uh, clavicles and his chest is just small compared to the rest of his body. But now, by being so depleted, so overrun by probably very hard dieting, he lost a lot of size, he lost a lot of pop, and he just looked like a shadow of himself. All right, the next uh, very big disappointment was uh, Wesley Wissers. A lot of us thought that he has a chance of becoming the new Mr. Olympia Classic Physique, even while Chris Bumstead is still competing, or at least that he was going to give Chris a run for his money, but he ended up in 8. 8 again. He was beaten by Michael the Bull. He was beaten by Brion Ainsley by Ramon Dino, by Mike Sommerfeld, by Urs Kaletsinski. All of these guys that he was beating at the Arnold Classic beat him this year. Why was that? It was simply because this was not Wesley at his best. Look at the conditioning right here. This was nowhere near what he brought to the Arnold Classic stage. I don't know what went wrong in this case. I guess he's gonna talk about it, but like he was... He wasn't as full, he wasn't as dry, he wasn't as hard, he wasn't even as big... You know, he lost a lot of that wow factor, a lot of the conditioning from the Arnold Classic. And I talked about this before, like, we never knew that he was going to be able to repeat what he brought to the Arnold Classic. Maybe that was one-off. Maybe he will never bring what he brought to the Arnold Classic. But he definitely didn't bring it to the Mr. Olympia stage this year, and he placed 8. Now, again, Mr. Olympia next year is up for the grabs, the door is wide open. Mike Sommerfeld can win it next year, Urs Kletzinski can do it, Ramon Dina can do it. Maybe even Brion Ainsley has a chance again to reclaim his title if everybody else is off. If they're not off, then I don't think so. And I think Wesley Wisters is still one of the competitors who can do it as long as he brings good conditioning. Now, he also needs to qualify for the Mr. Olympia first. Uh, I don't think he should go with Arnold Classic this year, because if he peaks for the Arnold Classic, will he be able to peak again for the Mr. Olympia? You know, maybe he should do a smaller show, weaker show, where he can be like 70-80% of himself the way he was all these years before when he was qualifying for the Mr. Olympia, and then try to nail it to bring 101% for the Mr. Olympia, and then, I mean, he was already able to beat all these guys. I don't know if Mike Sommerfeld uh, leapfrogged all these guys and they won't be able to beat him this year. Maybe. Maybe he's that good and he's going to be good uh, next year at the Mr. Olympia as well. And maybe nobody can actually beat him anymore. But I don't think so. I think there is like four or five guys in the classic physique that can win the Mr. Olympia next year, depending on how on or off they are. And Wesley Wister is definitely one of those guys. And like with his stature, with his uh, name, with his popularity, uh, with the way he's shaped, you know, with that golden era type of look, I think he would be the perfect representation for classic physique uh, since uh, Chris Bumstead is no longer here. So he needs to deliver. He needs to come in peeled, man. Peeled and full and hard. 101% the way he was at the Arnold Classic. He could not have been any better than that. If he just repeats that... I think they're going to give it to him. I think he's going to be the next Mr. Olympia. But we still have to wait to see if he can do it. What do you guys think? And finally, and this is going to be a controversial one. I'm going to get a lot of heat for this one. But Hari Chopin is in my list of disappointments. Why? How? Well, based on a lot of photos that I saw, it seems like he, he wasn't off, per se. You know, he was actually in condition. Maybe in that top three... His conditioning was arguably the best. Now, of course, we all knew, we all talked about this for years now, that if Samson finally figures out conditioning, nobody stands a chance against him. I mean, he is a big guy, a tall guy, an aesthetic freaking monster. 
he was only lacking conditioning and even uh, while being super off he was still placing you know top three at a mr olympia he was winning the arnold classic and we all knew once again as long as he comes in conditioned nobody can beat him the other guys are former 212 guys they can't go against an actual proper bodybuilder you know an open bodybuilder and with those classic lines, with those uh, dominant body parts like legs, like arms, like chest, I mean, he has everything back, he's also very good now with a small, tiny waist, like, there was no chance of these shorter guys to beat him as long as he is in decent conditioning, but you can say that Hardy was in better conditioning. So, then, why the hell am I even saying that he disappointed this year? Well, I'm saying that simply because he did not bring what he brought to the Arnold Classic. Even though he may have been the most conditioned guy in the top three, in the top four, he didn't live up to his own standards, right? So I thought he was going to come in the way he was at the Arnold Classic, and if he did that, personally, I don't think there was a chance of him beating Samson, but if you look at the scorecard, at the pre-judging, it was a tie, right? It was eight and eight for both of these guys. It was very, very close at the pre-judging, but at the finals, Samson closed the gap. And that's not something I expected, since uh, Hadi is uh, coached by Hani Rambert, and Hani Rambert is kind of known for bringing his guys even drier, even better for the finals. He did that so many times with Phil Heath. There were moments when it was very close between Phil and Kai, and then at the finals, Phil would just show up better and he would lock it down. And I thought Hadi might do the same thing here, Derek as well, but apparently Samson did a better job at nailing the peak at the finals. He came in better. At least that's the way we can see it based on the judging. So it was actually extremely close. And if Hardy was a little bit sharper, I guess he could have won this show as well. So again, the conditioning was okay. But it wasn't as the Arnold Classic. He wasn't as good as he was at the Arnold Classic Ohio, nor at the Arnold Classic UK. That was also better than this version of Hardy. He was holding a lot of water in the back. That back was definitely a lot more crispy at the Arnold Classic. Glutes were also more shredded. Hamstrings were showing more details. This back of Hardy, this is not good, guys. Take a look at it. Come on. Come on. This is not a lean. This is not a dry back. If this back was leaner, yeah, I guess. I guess he would win the Mr. Olympia. So he disappointed. Let's be real. He was not at 100%. Even if he was at 90% and this still was the best conditioning on the stage, it's not what Hari needs to be with his size, with his shape, with his structure in order to win the Mr. Olympia, so he lost again. He once again failed to reclaim his Mr. Olympia title. He is qualified for life. He doesn't need to do any shows before the Mr. Olympia. He can just focus on Mr. Olympia and show up better next year and maybe he can take the title away from Samson. I feel like we might have a legacy, I think Samson is the kind of bodybuilder that should have a reign for a couple of years at least, but the way the judging is these days, it's not gonna be the case, I don't think there is a thing of knocking out the champion anymore, you know, as long as Hardy is a little bit better, he might win, or anybody else. So down below in the comment section guys, give me your thoughts on this topic, if you enjoyed this video guys, give it a thumbs up, and for more this kind of content, subscribe to this channel guys, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye bye.